6 o'clock, and I will call this meeting to order. First up is general public comment. Yes, sir. Yes. Hi. Ryan Fleischer from Waitsfield. Uh huh. And um, I'm here to speak about what's going on with the school board and this what they're calling redesign. And uh, hopefully, uh, you all received an invitation to attend some of the meetings that they're going to be having in the next couple of weeks. Is that correct? Um, specifically, as, as a board, no. Um, yeah, it would have been. I thought that Caitlin Hollister, who's the, uh, the uh, chairperson of the board, invited all the schools at the time. We'll check on that. Well, I was, might have invited the, our, our reps, but. But I, I, no, the reps, that's it's a different thing. No, this, this is, okay, I'm trying to get, okay, when, when, you're, uh, when they didn't respect your uh, choice for the uh, replacement representative last year, I would say, if you remember reading the article, they have a value for it. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for I'm that. Real, <laughs> well, I think you expressed how I felt. Uh, <clears throat> I'm really concerned that uh, in the next four or five years, we could end up having two elementary schools for the four Valley towns, pre-K through four, mm -hmm. with 100 students each. You know they've been talking about some of the plans moving the seventh and eighth graders from uh, the Harvard Middle School, but basically closing the Harvard Middle School, moving them to Cross and Road, which is a good school, but um, you know, I'm not diminishing that in any way. But Bridget's, Bridget Neese is the superintendent's original plan from uh, December of 2017 was that fifth through eighth would all grow through Crossing Book Hall. And that's going to leave just two schools. You know, they've already talked that plan, probably you were aware of it, talked about closing more town and face and maybe more town and more. So basically, I'm asking you to get involved. I'm pulling the fire alarm on this one. They're working on this right now. If, if, and I'll be going to all the Valley towns, so it's nothing you need to more town. Um, and then I'll be going to all the select boards. I attend all the school board meetings, all the, any other meetings that I can attend. I've been very vocal about many issues. Um, but if you don't get involved in 10 years, there's going to be two schools for Fort Valley Town, pre-K through four. And let me just read a little thing. I, I, wrote, I presented this at the school board also. The big problem I have with sending Valley students to Waterbury is the loss of their energy and activity from the Valley. We want the students to be engaged in the towns in which they live and their parents attending school activities like PTA and award ceremonies and after school activities and sports and lunches and lectures, etc. locally. The Valley has four excellent elementary schools and I'm sure would create an equally excellent middle school. Moving five to eight students to Waterbury would gut the valley of all that student parent energy and economic vitality and move it to Waterbury. I think that is very unfair and unbalanced. A six to eight grade valley middle school would have about the same number of students as Crossit does for those grades. I think that creates a good and fair balance within the district. Then both the middle schools would meet in ninth grade at Harwood on equal food footing. I also have ideas to create a magnetite program on sustainable living in a new middle school that is to be determined. Basically, I have an agenda. I want a middle school created in what we call the southern end of the district, which is, includes all around the town. It's a sort of common sense place would be in the Waitsfield area, just because of its physical location, you know, related to the, to the uh, four valley towns, but it wouldn't have to be necessarily. Do you know if there are problems with expanding Moortown, like if Moortown was repurposed to a middle school, Moortown school? Is it in a floodplain, or does it have other septic restrictions? Is anybody aware of that? It may have a septic yeah, restriction, have a septic. restriction. Yeah. but that could be just a matter of expanding what they have there now. Uh -huh. I mean, there's, there's no physical limitation, like, you know, Not that I'm aware of. No, not that I'm not aware of. Because that's one of the things they're considering, is <coughs> repurposing possibly even Waitsfield School, the middle school. I if think they were going to do that, they had to tear down the school and build a new school. I was in construction for 20 years, I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm, a for, I'm advocating for a new middle school, six through eight. I think we could build it cheaper. The problem is finding a location. If anybody can think of a location, you can contact me um, or, well, 
me, <laughs> because I'm sort of the only one that's really advocated or pushing for this. Um, I talked to the phone company, that field next to them would be perfect, but apparently that's in a floodplain that they don't want to sell. Hadley's got a, uh, what they call the fairgrounds up on the hill behind uh, and, uh, his little farm there. Uh, that, that's a possibility. Waitsfield also has it. I'm still working on it. The other one is Ben Flemmer's uh, four acres next to the polo field there. And they could use the polo field for athletic activities. So I'm asking for help. And I'm saying if you guys don't pay attention, this is dude just going to watch it go by. And this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm not, nothing in it for myself. I don't have kids in the school. I've got two grandkids who actually will be leaving the country. You know, for so you're, you're saying a middle school six to eight? I think six to eight. I don't personally. There's some dispute among academics whether shift, you know, changing schools at after fourth grade or fifth grade is is best. I I've read articles that are on both. I'm not an academic to be honest. I taught and you know, other things like that, but I'm not a professional, I don't present to be that way, but I read a lot and can make sense of stuff. And um, I think six to eight, partly because it's smaller in terms of the physical construction of either a new school or any kind of renovation. It's just one grade less. It's another set of roughly 60 to 70 students less if you added a fifth through eighth grade. Uh, personally, I think that changing schools after fifth grade is students are a little more mature and a little better. And my grandson actually this was visiting him this weekend in uh, Ipswich, Mass, and he actually goes, they go uh, K through five, and then they have a uh, six through eight, and then they go into high school. In um, so basically, you'd have one, two middle schools, uh, Audemary, Duxbury, than a, a valley school. Mm -hmm. I mean, think you know what? Think about if you lost your elementary school. Think about the effects on the town. So we're talking about doing that kind of thing to all four towns with all our students, all that energy going up to Waterbury, where the students go after a school or a sports event to get creamies or whatever or get pizza, or parents having to drive back and forth to pick up the busing. You know, it, it's a little longer, it's a, it's a footprint, you know, a bigger carbon footprint. Probably not the most dramatic effect, but just think of all that energy going up to Waterbury. And then what parents, you know, we're having, already having pro problems keeping parents with young families moving here. I've got a, unfortunately, probably facing these to be closed. There's only 68 students who just canceled the third grade, you know. Converted to housing. For, for families, offer them incentive, uh, affordable housing, or for teachers who have young kids. The only way we're going to reduce the tax costs on our education is by getting more students. None of this consolidation, no cutting teachers, no cutting programs, no closing buildings, at best, will slow the rate of increase, which is better than nothing. But we're not going to reduce costs. The only way. We've got the same resources, a class that's got a teacher that's got 16 or 18 students that's capable of having 25. You're going to get the same amount of money with the same classroom and the same teacher. And then you get more money and it'll you know, reduce the tax rate or at least keep it from going up. So uh, I'm talking about being creative and creating incentives to have people move in. I have an idea, like I said, about a middle school that's kind of like focused on sustainable living just because of the energy we have for growing things here in the valley, and food production, and you know, golf production, you know, things like that. Um, STEM is a big thing now, you know, we could have, but you can get very technical with a lot of agriculture and growing indoors and computerized nutrients and stuff like that. You know. um, anyway, I'm just asking for your help. I'm asking you to get involved to pay attention. You should have received an invitation where they just slipped by. If not, there's going to be activities probably that will be in the Valley Reporter. Uh, Katie knows about this. If not, I can email you the, the list. And then over the next couple of weeks, uh, there will be some during the daytime. Be one here in Moortown, definitely. One in each town, some in daytime. Maybe in the schools. I'll make sure that you get that. Okay. It was listed on right. Porch Forum, wasn't it? The <clears throat> list of... Yes, uh, Christine yeah. uh, Sullivan uh, posted yeah. that exactly, yes. But you shouldn't, because I spoke to this 
to the school board about inviting all the select boards, and I was told it was done. So I will double check on that. Okay. I'm not on the school board. I want to be clear. I don't have any official capacity with the school board. Right. I just give them help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, we've discussed this as a board quite quite a bit, and certainly um, we're just we have this shared your opinion that these are. These are community. This is the community. Our schools and uh, Moortown is, is very vibrant, and we've never been able to get a straight answer from the school board as to why they've targeted Moortown. I mean, there just doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. Targeted in terms of, of one of the schools they are talking about to close. I mean, there was just there's just no reason that, that we can say. So, and nobody can see the supplier on this either. Space is hard because it's small, but they're like ranked among the like four nine or one, now they're like fourth or fifth in the state. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah. no, there is, it's nothing personal, I hate to say it, you know, for more town, but I'm sure it isn't. Um, let's just say the superintendent's ideas are not my favorite. I, I've written a couple of pieces that may have read yeah, about it before. I, I so, kept up with it, yeah. yeah. I, I have nothing against ideas being floated, but we've never seen any solid, detailed plans with reasons to do what they are suggesting. So we haven't had it. We just put out ideas with no backup and no pieces. But they are developing those now. They've actually had a couple of votes that would have moved all the students. They've had two votes already that would have moved the second eighth graders to cross the road. Fortunately, they got voted down. But I raised hell when I came back last March and saw what was going on. And uh, I actually got censored at the board. I don't know if you know about that. They tried to shut me down and they divorced me. You can't do that. <laughs> but um, they, and that was that they're doing better now. I'll give them some credit for doing better with their organization. Doesn't mean their reasons, their, 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 um, uh, you know, requesting hearing from the community, that's what all these uh, meetings are about, really, but they're not like academic or intellectual you know, studies about what's best. Um, you know, Bridget put it, the superintendent put out, she said, oh, we could save a million dollars if we move this. In. But you didn't have any basis for it. No, you know, and I'm, I'm a stickler for, okay, show, show me the money, you know, show, you know. Like I said, I work in construction, I, I just tore apart the, the presentations they've had from the architect, this true ex colleagues, you know, it, was, it, was, it just wasn't honest. And architects are always going to try and build up because they want to have their name on something, you know. That's their job, that's fine. It's my job, it was as a contractor or working for a client to make the cost reasonable. So I appreciate you hearing me out. Yeah. And I'm begging you to get involved in any way you can, you know, send representatives to at least or all of you attend at one or more of these meetings and you have to be in your own town, it could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. Come to the school board, speak up, ask questions. If they feel they're getting oversight, they're gonna probably be, you know, more responsive. And I will say that the new chairperson is much better than the previous one. She's much more open and trying to include the community. So mm -hmm. I'll give them credit, they're doing better, but this next couple, it's not like next year. They're talking about making decisions, having information now that they'll make a decision in September for presenting a bond in next March for town meeting. Right. And um, it could be anywhere from 20 to $36 million. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't get me started. <laughs> Too late. For so I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to help in any way I can. I will send you an email so that you'll have my email address. Okay. And um, thank you for the time. Very good. Thank you for coming. Okay. You, okay. you, you want to write down your name and email on your answer? Sure. Sure. Okay, next up is uh, Dan Von Trapp. Uh, actually, I spoke with Dan earlier today. He's planning on building a pond and uh, had a, uh, a request to the select board. So, yes. Go to it. So, hi, uh, like you said, Dan Von Trapp. Um, <clears throat> me and my wife Jordan have farm, the old Gove farm off of Gove Road, um, off <coughs> South Hill. And, uh, 
yeah, I'm in the permitting process, and just today <clears throat> with David working through it, and it came to the end where there's the fees, and with with pond construction, apparently, I don't know how many ponds have been built in Moortown, but anyways, it seems kind of funny that square footage is used just like how square footage is used because it's the structure, you know. So roughly, my plans are about 250 feet by 50 feet, and so it seemed to me kind of like a is it 10 cents per square foot, <clears throat> so it's 1,250 bucks. Wow, that's kind of a splash, but whatever. But we had an idea that if there's interest. If the town wants to be able to use the pond as a um, fire pond, or a, I guess a, would we call it a fire pond, or a, mm -hmm. yeah, access to be able to <clears throat> grab water from it whenever um, they feel necessary, I would be totally down with that being the case um, if you guys were to way the fee. So that's what I'm proposing is if I don't have to pay that fee then I don't know if it sounds like a good thing if no. It sounds like fair deal know. to me. But yeah I don't know where our, our fire access is up in that area. Whether you know whether we already have a pond there or not I don't know. We'd have to not there is any there's, uh, the, there's nothing up there. Uh, there's, uh, there's, yeah. <clears throat> no, I'm yeah. pretty positive. Yeah, yeah, there isn't, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, I can't remember an instance of this in the past, but. I mean, where do you guys know? Is there certain locations? I mean, we have one over here at the Mad River. Right, right up on Manor B. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, down across from the garage, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's one down further on Manor B. Yeah. Right, and then we have one up on Moortown Common. Um, I believe. There's, there's one on the Common. There's definitely not one on South Hill. Right. I have a 30 foot pond. <laughs> right. <laughs> this house is really close to mine, so. Yeah. So. <laughs> Your pond is uh, accessible, you know, with the fire equipment. Yeah, so we're the right location. at the very end of Gove Road, and so basically the plow turnaround is our driveway, and then there's a little, um, it's about 50 feet, it kind of goes up a steeper grade, right to where the pond would be, um, and that's, I mean, we drive on it all the time. I don't know if, if it's something that that we thought this was a good idea, and then you're like. Have the town guys maybe just upgrade that little section to more of a maintained, better access for the fire department to be able to access. No, no. Um, just, just in case, you know, it's like you, you I, don't, I don't even know how you get the water out of. Is it like do they have to have a hydro hookup or? They have a special, a special, like what they call a dry hydrant that they. Right. They build into the pond, which they could put their hoses onto. And that's, but in a pinch, yeah. I believe they could just stick a pump in there and pump right. the water out. But uh, so I, I'm suggesting that maybe the fire chief you get together with the fire chief and, and the zoning administrator and take a look and you know, if it works. Uh, you know, I think it's I think that's a reasonable solution. Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah. You know, if it works for the fire department. Yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah. There are there. There what? They're in a meeting right now. Oh, are they? Yeah. Yeah. No. So that makes sense. I mean, I can just cross the way. I don't think they mind. I don't think they want to. No. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'd also want to find out a little bit more of the public end right now. Yeah. About to what use the fee is put, what work has to be done to permit a pond. It does sound like a lot. So, you know, we may want something, but not 1250. Right. I have no idea what it takes to firm a pond. And I think I see someone in the back who can tell me that. that <laughs> yeah, the study is so on. The pond is a structure. The 
pond is built as a hole in the ground under grade, it is something that can be approved by the zoning administrator. In this case, there's going to be a berm, a dam built up, and in those cases, it's, it's uh, a conditional use and it requires the, the DRB. So there's going to be a DRB fee associated with this application as well as the, the building permit application. Uh, I look hard and long because that $1,250 seemed a little steep to me, but according to the rules, it's a structure and that's the price per square foot, and that's what it comes out to. As a constellation to Mr. Van Trapp, we don't charge for depth. <laughs> now, now my, my concern coming from zero is, is effectively that it's each dam. If we were ground level, there would be no issue. Right. And as a dam, there are then uh, questions regarding what it might affect if we were affect. So, um, how high over? So, that's so as a dam, as a burn, it's a conditional use, and the zoning requires that there be a certificate of safety provided by a licensed engineer. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be under the review process for the, the DRB. And so then it's paid for by the DRB and not the applicant? No, that's no, paid so for You pay for that anyway. Right. So, yeah. so there's, those, there's that fee, the engineering fee, mm -hmm. and then there's a the DRB fee, mm -hmm. which is, you know, so the, it's going to be $275 for the DRB and then at least $500 for engineering the thing. Um, so then for me to look at another $1,250, I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's starting to, Okay, yeah. so it's 275 for the DRB plus the 1250 based on square footage, yes. plus your expenses for an engineer or something like that. Yes. Okay. So don't expand your pond. <laughs> Unless you want to just go down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think Ray's suggestion is a good one. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to scoot over there and yeah. talk to him now, uh, uh, Stephen Pratt is the fire chief. Okay. And um, you know, just tell me what we're here and they say yay, then uh, I'll let it holds a lot of weight with us, that's yeah. sure. Okay. <clears throat> and so if they think it's a good idea, you guys think it's a good idea, or where does this go from here? Um, yeah, you're probably looking to start well, that's the thing. later. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually like really chomping at the bit because of multiple things, but we, and we, you know, we hold events and there's events coming up, and I'd like to be able to get this thing in the ground and grass starting to grow anyways before, so it doesn't look like a bomb went off up there. Right. Um, and I should have started this months ago. I didn't, but anyways. Right. Seems like we, we need some sort of legal agreement or something. To, oh, right away. You need a right away, yeah. Yeah, something yeah. that guarantees us access, you know. Right. A suggestion for that could be to have that imposed as a condition upon approval by the DRB so that access is required and that might be cheaper than having a lawyer do a easement. Yeah, the DB. Yeah. I'm not a lawyer, I don't know, but I'm just suggesting that could be a possible alternative to that. And that would include anything that we have to do get access to the trunk. And that would also be a permit condition? Yeah, you can put that in the you mean, what do you mean? Um, you had mentioned that support might be upgrading of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's what um, the fire department and or town crew decided was the best way to do it in order to facilitate getting trucks up there safely year-round or whatever, um, that's, that's fine with me. All right, well, I'd say just get over there and we'll be here. Yeah. We'll, we'll be here. <laughs>
So it's good back then? If, if you want to say bad news, I don't know that we, I don't right know. Right right home with yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we can make a decision that because we don't have a full word. But, oh, okay. But, and again, I don't want to have to hold you up either. Well, yeah, is that, I mean, is there a possibility that we can get a decision without having a full board? What's the... You can always do it pending. Yeah, you can waive the fee as of tonight pending the next board meeting discussion. Right, right. Yeah, we so you can yeah. start, yeah, in the process. <clears throat> and not to throw any wrinkles in, but do we need to get any input from the DRB? They're going to have to have their own meeting anyways. Right. Yeah, yeah they're going to have to have their own meeting. So you probably wouldn't be able to start. Oh, no, I, think I, I can't start until I have a meeting. Yeah. And so I have to have a couple weeks to have it in the paper and have my mm -hmm. right. papers right. know about it. Right. Um, but I'd like to be able to just check mm -hmm. anything and everything off the list as soon as possible. Sure. Okay. Okay, well, all right, I'll look at that. that. Come back, yeah. And zip on back. Okay, sounds good. I Stephen Pratt. Yeah. Stephen Pratt, yeah. I texted him. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. We'll be back. Thank you. I did get an email from the DRB saying that it would probably be this month. They would want to try to get it for this month, their meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Now, Carl, you're probably here for subdivision. No, I'm actually here for. First, for a public comment or sure. a discussion of sorts. Sure. Go for it. I'm going to move the front row. Yeah. So, uh, beginning next year, there's going to be a shipping operation on our property at Bradley Road. And there won't be a sugar house on site, so the sap's going to be trucked off of Bradley Road, the sugar house. And the end of Bradley Road is. Uh, now class four, and it's about uh, point, point 0.18 miles, I guess, long with the class four section. And the road really needs to be upgraded because it's, uh, at that point, after it goes from class three to class four, it's pretty much a ditch at this point. Uh, many years ago, Craig was going to upgrade the road, but it was one of those projects that was on the back burner but never got finished. So we've looked at uh, trying to upgrade the road, but the road basically is in a, in a hollow now, and there's probably a foot and a half banks on either side of the road. So to bring the road up, so that it would actually shed water, you have to bring the road up a couple feet, which is not really a viable option. There's high ground to the left of the existing road that would make a nice road, uh, but then the existing road would continue to be a ditch, basically. So I'm wondering about the possibility of the town possibly giving up that last section of the town road so that we can just continue to use it as a ditch to get this out. <laughs> or I, mean, I don't know if that's possible or not, but that's kind of the way I'm thinking is financially it's much easier to fix the high ground adjacent to the existing road than it is to build up the old town road anyway. So uh, the high ground we talked about, that's on, is that town right away, or is it in the, is it's, it on the private land? Yes, land? yes. Yeah, it's a jet, you know, I don't know what the, is it class four road at a 50 foot right away too, or is it 25 feet? Or I think it's, 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 it's either two or three or high, I think. Yeah, yeah. Some, they, they vary. Yeah, so, port so, two, so portions of it are probably still in the town right away. It pretty much would follow the, almost exactly the town road, except over five feet from the center line and then continue on from there. It gradually moves it moves away from the existing town road. But it's, uh, I know that uh, Martin has talked to the sugar maker about it and we don't have any. Hey, he's right there. Hey, Martin. Are you available for a second? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking Bradley Road and sugar. Yeah. Uh, uh, Spoke to you a little bit about it. Yeah, so I kind of told him it's kind of a ditch now. And <laughs> yeah. You to bring the road up so you can actually have ditches and whatever. It's, it's a bit of a project. Yes, for the. And I told Timmy that I'd be willing to probably put a load, maybe two, in to get to where I turn around anyway. 
there's no material there that it is right now anyways. So I told him I'd be willing to put a little bit into that just to help myself out. Um, but it would be all on him from there above. So, so my conversation has been, can we get the town to abandon the end of the road and build a new road next to it? Or that's, right. that's yeah. kind of what I'm thinking about. So, yeah. so, so you know. So what do you, how do you feel, Martin? <clears throat> I guess I don't. I guess I'm Switzerland. <laughs> Neutral? I don't know. Um, I don't, didn't, haven't really thought about it. Um, I, mean, I guess that'd be a town decision, select board decision, if there's any value to having keeping that. I like, honestly don't even know where it goes. Um, We'd have to have a hearing or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, that's, that's like a big process to abandon. <clears throat> It's not, it's just in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's on that section of the plus four? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Well, the windows are on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nothing down there. Makes it easier. You see the old house at the end of the road. There's no one there. But anyway, that's, that's my idea and thoughts. And whatever you can tell me what you have to make a formal request, or I'm sure I'll a little more of Martin and see what he says and just let you know the process of considering that. What the, why, why would the town have to abandon their portion? Uh, I guess it's not clear to me why, why the town would have to abandon it. Well, if we build a road on high ground next door and, and shape it so that water is going to flow off the road like it should, it's going to go over to the town right away okay. and continue running town that's the lowest point is the is the road itself. So all the water runs down the road as opposed to leaving the surface of the road okay. and going into the ditch. The, the, the road is the ditch basically. It's a, it's a concave <coughs> there would be no standards for you building a new road either. Because they wouldn't be in a right of way or anything. So they could build the road how we do well, I need something to push you a survey to weigh this out? Do what I need something? Do I have something or um, all of those? Yeah, I don't. I, I can probably get something better. Right, sure. Yeah, I'm just thinking to have a year. We have to show people what we. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I would never have been. I don't know the whole process, but I'm certainly. Mm -hmm. I think that's not an unreasonable request. You know, it's not being used. It's, I think it's going to be a process to sure. go through. But yeah, because yeah, the other alternative is just to get a permit to work in the right away. So that's another thing I've come to your plan. So. Right. right. It just it would be quite a process to create ditches on that road now. I mean, you could build it up, I suppose, but that's all material. Right. So yeah. far, I like your idea better. What's that? So far, I like your idea better than yeah. building up that road. You know, I guess it really, uh, I, think, I think we really need to have a site meeting out there to look at what you're saying. Yeah. Not so we mm -hmm. all understand what's going on here. Yeah. That may be the first step. Yeah. As a, as a public meeting out there, and mm -hmm. that way, we all you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Much like Dan, it's something we'd like to do this summer. Have ready for next season. So. Yeah. I'm going to first make sure that the landowner there isn't adversely affected by throwing out the road and losing all you know, its. This is him. He's a landowner. <laughs> he's a landowner. Yeah, Carl's a landowner. Sure. We don't care if he's a landowner. Okay, I didn't know. Well, possibly before our next meeting, you know, we could meet out there a half hour early and have a, a site meeting or something like that. Mm -hmm. Check with Tom or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. She'll see it when it does. And uh, I think my main, main concern would be in terms of the, the new road, it would have an effect on the class three portion. Right. So, right. Yes. Yeah, so conversation with Tom. Is he still here? <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's not, it's not like Martin wanted to turn around at the end, right? And then you take yeah, it. Yeah, and it's quite a jump. You turn around at the top now, right? I do. Yeah. Um, we historically turn around at the last house for uh, Dale Ray where he has pavement. Um, so we were backing on his pavement, and that was starting to crack and squish. So like the last five or six years, I've gone up another hundred yards maybe um, to the top to turn around and uh, it's fine um, just you know in the first couple times out in mud season because there is really there is no material on that section of road um, so um, the conversation I had with Timmy LaBeouf was that since I was using it anyways I'd be uh, I think it would be you know, to build it up to somewhat so that it at least can handle the town truck turning around there. Uh, anyways, it was on the, you know, my work agenda anyways. It just hasn't been done yet, so. Mm -hmm. Probably three, four loads of, you know, gravel, probably a couple, uh, you know, bank around something to give it a base and then just a very thin top coat. And if you can handle the town truck, then it should handle the um, sap traffic, you know, with the, the truck loaded with the sap. So. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Not bad, surely. So after you have a here's the petition, you have a hearing, you have to see it, and then if you say yes, he can do it, then you have to have a survey done mm -hmm. before you can finish doing it. And then based on the survey, you make the final decision. Thanks for working. Should you email that to me? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's, let's see. We've got reports and communications. It looks like Martin's here. Maybe we can get the right one stay here, but we can change the Yeah, I just want bit. to make sure that we've got. Seven. 
64 with equipment? Uh, yeah, 64 and change. And 64 change. or 5. Yeah. I want 64 and 5, I want yeah. to say, but I don't know. Exactly. Is that uh, the one that's in the stock, or is that? That is the, the uh, yes, that's the 20. Uh, that's the one that's in stock, built. Um, theoretically, we could basically have it as soon as the warrant sign and check is cut. It will need to go to the airpoints for a few accessories, uh, backup camera. Accessories, but basically you know, the, the plow and sander will both be through the airports and will be, be, be I'm assuming they have them in stock, but I don't know that for sure. Okay. So is that include, that's probably not included in the 64 It is, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's completely okay. right. Yeah, so we plan to try to track it into the plow and sander if we're ready to track it. we run up, um, you know, try to plan it possibly for down for a few days, maybe, or something like that. We'll be fine, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, did you want to mention the finance committee recommendations? Right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the, the last finance or review committee um, met last week, and um, one of the things we we're going to bring to the select board was uh, the fact of using the capital reserve fund to pay for the truck and to pay it over a, a three-year period and um, yeah so that was, that was that the second thing that we um, talked about was um, in June 5th I think the uh, CD matures so we were bringing that back to the board too that we would remove that with the North Savings Bank. So, um, so I mean, I have, you know, perhaps Ray should make the motion um, if you want me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go so, on the committee. <laughs> How much money would be left in the capital reserve? Uh, if we we have 110, I think. Uh, 111,000 in the capital reserve. <clears throat> so, so uh, you like a motion, uh, uh, there would be two motions, one to buy the truck and then one about the financing, or, or we just need to make a yeah, actually, actually, one? Yeah, but, uh, I, I, actually, I think probably it would be a good idea to, you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. For, first the truck, to buy the truck, then I would say, Accept the recommendation of the financial review committee to use those funds to pay for it. That would be the second question. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and commit to pay them back. Right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and proceed with the purchase of the uh, 2018 Dodge from uh, St. John Ferry Dodge for the removal of the, 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 the prices right now. Do I need to put the price? I'll put the exact number in it when I. 64. 64. <laughs> but when I write it, I'll put the exact number. Yeah. yeah. For under 65,000. There you go. And a price to be determined, uh, the exact price to be written in. Okay. I'll second that. Any more discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And I'd like to all, uh, make a motion that we uh, finance the truck through the capital uh, savings reserve to be paid back over a period of three years. Per the recommendation. Per the recommendation of the, of the uh, finance committee. Finance review committee. Finance review committee. And I'm thinking we should probably not use the word finance the truck that way. We yeah. should pay for it. Pay for it. And, um, <coughs> Over the next three years, we'll put in a budget line item to pay back the 
Michigan. So you're going to pay for it all at once? Yeah, correct. Right, right. It takes three years to pay it back. Yes, correct. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So for you want to read back my motion? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're making a motion to pay for the truck out of the savings reserve fund. Uh, capital reserve. Capital, capital reserve, reserve fund capital. to be paid back over three years as a line item in the budget. Yeah. Per so recommendation. As a line item. As recommended by the yeah. finance review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I'll second that. <laughs> Any more discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Do you want to do the city renewal? Or sure, or? might as well. I guess we're going to do that one too. <laughs> no, I think I, I, I think one of us can do I'll, I'll make that motion if we accept the uh, recommendation of the Finance Review Committee to uh, renew the CD that's currently with North of the savings back for another nine months at a rate, uh, we believe the rate is two and a quarter. At least it was two months ago. Charlotte was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> Any more discussion on that? A, a rate of at least, and then in case it's gone up. <laughs> Uh, at a rate of, uh, well, at. You could just put yeah, another at, nine months. Yeah, yeah, I would say no, just another yeah. nine months. Yeah, yeah. just leave it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay, any more discussion? All in favor of that, say aye. 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 Okay, Perfect. Good, okay. What else you got? I sent uh, regarding Brown to a road. Right, the right, right. right. gentleman that's uh, Jason Lombardo has a moving date. He has since got back to me after the email went out and said that he contacted the cabin company and said that the date is tentative and then moved to August 1st and said, oh, okay. well, that's good. I was speaking with him. I said that was a fairly tight front line. So I give him fun. He gives us a few more money. Good. Uh, so I just, uh, I do believe there'll have to be some work done to that road. Uh, Maybe I'm aware he's going to apply for the road work permit. Mm -hmm. So he knows he's doing all the work. Correct. And he, yes, he, yes, he's, he's not expecting the town to do nothing. Um, the contractor um, was looking for recommendations. Uh, yes, contractor through the cabin company. But we do, I mean, he's going to work in right away. Correct. Right so he's going to, yes. Yes. So he's going to need to get a road work permit and probably cut a few trees, I'm guessing, to get the 14 foot minimum. So maybe not. It's pretty tight up to there. Uh, we're just going off of memory. Um, and then, so he'll just need to do that. And I know there was some discussion. I know I talked with Cheryl. Uh, probably a year or better ago, and um, whether that was actually a uh, one rod right away or two rod right away. So, something that we may want to do the research on before um, the work is done. My general thought was that all of the roads were at least two rods. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. That was my general mm -hmm. thinking, but if there's some other out there or something we should probably learn from that. But so whereabouts up there is that? He's at the end. end. He's at the, the year, what they call the year, which is up past the angles, I believe. Oh, up there, they go to the left. Yeah, I believe so, yes. So, so it's all the way up there. So. Is that going to be a permanent residence? Yes. 
because we know he needs to go through the I assume so for the, yeah, for the um, resident permit. Yeah, I assume so. I can have that conversation with him. Um, you know, he seemed to, uh, you know, real, you so, know, realize that uh, there was a lot to it this time. Right. So. so I think, uh, it work. make sure he has Yeah, it. he's going to apply for a road permit, but you should remind him that he needs Oh, yeah, he needs to have a permit. I think on class four rule for a permit right. resident you need to have. You have to go through BRB. Okay. Oh, sure that's outreach. But he so definitely yeah. doesn't have one yet. Because there hasn't been any BRB years. Yeah. I, I think that's where his only reads. I have no idea. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, because the uh, maintenance of winter time. Right. For mm -hmm. Yeah. Emergency access, that's going to be an issue. Right. All right, so there's permit yeah. additions. Right. Yeah. Down the road, they're drum charge as well. The fire truck drum has to get here. They can't get here, so the town has to do some work. And then they can turn around and say, oh, well, for your mm -hmm. permit, you were obligated to keep it so. Yeah, so it's something good. You probably should know about that. That's yeah. To get a fire vehicle up there yeah. in the wintertime, it's yeah. going to take a lot of yeah. work. Yeah. And, uh, so that's really all I've got. Okay. I guess. Well, as long as you're here, can I ask a couple quick road sure. questions? And yeah. this, is, this is just so I understand what's yeah. going on. Um, as you head towards the bottom of the board down of Common Road, you know, there's that big yeah. 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 Now, what's going on there? Is that the clay splitting? Yes, the clay splitting. Wood, um, wood, some water. Wood. Is there anything that could be done to make that less likely to happen? Um, or only basically that road rebuild. rebuild. Those are those are going to happen. Um, that spot is notorious for mm -hmm. doing that. That whole um, <laughs> thing basically could be done. Try putting some clay to the ground, but it's uh, it is all clay. I mean, it is mm -hmm. almost entirely clay. I graded it today, which it's still going to be very soft, and mm -hmm. um, you know that hole will come back, but we'll try to keep that during. We're just trying to get around everywhere now and get the shoulder caught and get things shaped up. So. And the other question is also in more town common road. The culverts that have dropped. Yes. What's up with What's up with those? Well, they They tend to heave. Uh, they'll, they will rise and fall with frost. Sometimes uh, you'll get some water that may have gotten behind the culvert, mm -hmm. and instead of going in the culvert, it's raining beside the culvert. Um, so it stays, holds its form until the frost goes, and then it thaws, and the material falls in next to the culvert. Those we just basically got to check those and make sure that the water's making it into them. The other part uh, that happens if you backfill with very nice material, like you put a new culvert backfill with all gravel, mm -hmm. makes perfect sense, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, uh, you have all gravel in a two foot spot and you have native soils on both sides of that, uh, they all it reacts differently to the frost, so the native soils will mm -hmm. heave more, up to a foot more, and you'll have a huge dip on that because the culvert will actually stay in the gravel drain better, so it doesn't mm -hmm. so it doesn't react to the frost. So what is the right way. what is the right thing to do? With <laughs> we need to backfill with a mixture of uh, materials, not just the gravel. Okay, so you we had taper away. Correct. Yes. Either make a bigger opening. Backfill with the virgin material, the material that was taken out mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible. So I said we, we did get a grant for a culvert? Yes. Uh, is that something you hope to do this year? Or? Yes. Um, Are you going to do it yourself? Or you gonna... No, that's definitely a, um, a bridge company. That, like, um, is that the mountain road? Ha, yeah, at the end of Hawks Road, um, there's some scammering happening on the abutment. Um, it's 
had it's been there since I read. Um, a little, little bit of um, undermining happening on the bottom, so it's a uh, right more so or you know company that choose to deal with the bridges and uh, box culverts and stuff. Didn't we, didn't we fix some scour on that bridge? Or am I thinking of a different bridge? It seemed like we had a scour issue up there before. That uh, I think it has been done once, maybe well, almost probably 10, 15 years yeah. ago, long, yeah. quite a while ago. It looks like it's been patched. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it really probably is undersized. I've seen it actually um, not take water twice. Mm -hmm. You know, once in Irene, it didn't take water, and then uh, once after Irene, it was just one of those torrential downpours and spring. Uh, it took it, but it, it floods the, mm -hmm. that side of the road, the inlet side of the road, and then it goes down into the ditch. So it's, it doesn't really cause any issues, but it's definitely undersized for the location. Is that enough to get a grant to redo it? Oh, yeah, yeah um, I think so. But we're you know, probably $150,000, yeah. $200,000. So just you know, just our share. Just our share. You're just having to do a V-trans recommendation. Correct, exactly. Yeah, we get uh, inspections done on all the structures. Um, so, and this was a recommendation of V-trans, mm -hmm. basically in non-compliance at the moment because of how poor the uh, structure is. So. so, you'll put out some sort of RIP? Yeah, you? I'll have to find work with, maybe you can help me with that, Ray, just to find the right wording stuff to go into that um, to get that. I mean, the wording is through the inspection, or I guess the, the wording is there, but um, maybe just pick your brain on who would be the right contractors to send that out to. Yeah. I don't know if we do, do boys do anything like that. Or... Uh, we have in the past. It all depends on the timing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, this is can you lump that with the other culverts? As far as the, you mean the cost of it? Or the, um, the RFP. Just have one contractor come in. And oh, uh, yeah, this is a box culvert. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and the culverts that we do, we install like, in the pipe culvert, we typically install ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so, are you asking me if we could lump them into? Like doing work on other ones, or yes, is that it? It, it may or may not be a good idea. Yeah, right now the grant that we applied for is strictly for mm -hmm. this one mm -hmm. uh, box structure, so uh, we have to either reapply exactly mm -hmm. and then reapply to do any work on any others. Right now, all the rest are at least satisfactory. Yeah, the grant was only granted because we trans said they had to do it. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't have to do any other ones, you can't put it together with another one with this grant. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Is that the bid? No, this is my uh, thing, my uh, mailbox. <laughs> Price is on still. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Martin. Have a good evening. I think so. Windows been open yet this year? All right. Good, yeah. How about this? Oh, it's all on back here. Oh, I'm pretty sure we opened this one. Yeah, I've opened this one before. Did it open? So I'm back. Oh, yeah. And um, it sounds like they're totally all for it. Okay. So, whatever that means um, to you guys, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, should we... Well, did uh, they seem to have access? Did you have that conversation? Yep. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, and that, I mean, I'm all for them upgrading it if they think it needs to. Um, and that was kind of like, he didn't know for sure. I mean, he, he's been up there before. I mean, Martin, he knows more probably than um, Stefan, but... Yeah. I. 
feel like, it, like right now, for instance, like I'm driving cars in and out of my barn, storage purposes, and just a car will cut a little bit of a rut, like mm -hmm. these rut. So if it was this time of year, yes, you probably have to put something down, some fabric and maybe six inches of brush or some piece of gravel, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what but, length is about? Um, it's about 75 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it'd probably be a couple, two, maybe three loads. I don't know. Um, two loads. Yeah. Okay. So, no. and that's that's up to the you guys. Them. I'm like I said. I'm I'm fine with that. If it needs to be upgraded, it's not a problem. And we talked about the the potential of putting one of those um, <clears throat> hydrants in, or he said that it's not entirely necessary, like, can do that, or as long as you can get the truck close enough, you can just throw a section or two in and all in. Right. Yeah. Which is what they do not worry about. Yeah. And it's, it's really, I mean, if, if they felt a hydrant was necessary, I'm fine with that, but I, if you ask me, I just assume not put a hydrant up there if we didn't have to, and especially if it's only going to be used, you know, maybe once a year, if that. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. not a waste of time and money. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure how the, the procedure is exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think we could probably give initial uh, approval subject to what the GRB has to say. Okay. And, and uh, with the um, expectation that the we'll, Full board hopefully will ratify it next meeting. So I mean, I just want want Dan to be able to move and, forward. And we're, we're changing the way we're we waiving the we're square footage fee or waiving the square. I would say waiving the square footage fee. So the building permit fee is that yeah. is that what it's called? The building permit fee. Right. So we're waiving the building permit fee. Yeah. That's what I that's what I would like to be able to do if that. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel it. that's fair. I think it's a good way. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. We'll see. so I can put that in the form of a motion, I guess. That um, this board would like, uh, I'll make the motion that we um, grant the approval for waiving the um, pond permit structure. Permit. permit Structure fee and um, subject to final approval of the board uh, at next meeting and um, the decision of the DRB. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. 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 Just in the further discussion a bit, our intention is to keep the fee for the DRB of 275. Unless you want to wait that time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, they have to. Yeah, I would care. Like the painting. <laughs> and, and you have to pay for the engineer to certify yeah. whatever it is that he has to do for the deer that you have to do. Which I need to get on the office. That's the next step. Okay. Yeah, so the motion could also include um, the understanding that will pay for the RV fee and, and, and all other necessary costs. But we're not sticking to him with the cost of upgrading the road. Right. That's, right. No, no, that's, that, okay, that's true too. So, yes. yeah. I think that's, yeah, as long as you don't say anything yeah. about the road, I think it's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Okay, and you second that? I yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Right. Very good. Thank all right. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, my house won't burn down. There you go. <laughs> uh, while you were talking to, about the DRB, um, so I do minutes for the DRB, and I was doing them hourly. So he, um, I'm on his list of emails saying, hey, we may have a DRB meeting coming up. Are you guys available? And they let him know what I do it for you guys. Mm -hmm. So he may be asking you if it's okay 
if I don't know if he needs your permission for me to do that or if he if John can make that decision, I have no idea. I know before he talked to Tom. Okay. But I don't know if he needs the DRB needs your permission to have a pay someone two minutes. Oh. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I didn't think so either. I yeah, just wanted to check before budget, I did. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so it is now seven. Uh, it is now seven oh six, and so I will call the public hearing for the uh, adoption of the interim bylaws subdivision regulations uh, to order. And I thought that Karen Horn or somebody from the planning commission was going to be here, but I guess not. Um, and so, Carl. Wait. Hi. <laughs> so. You want me to go? Sure thing. Okay, so uh, good morning for this meeting. Uh, refers to um, 44 VSA section 4415 interim bylaws. So I went and I looked up the interim bylaw statute and I read it. And the interesting part of it was I'll just read a couple of uh, lines here. Okay, these interim bylaws shall be adopted, reenacted, extended, or amended by the legislative body of the municipality after public hearing upon public notice as an emergency measure. So it sounds like interim bylaws are supposed to be enacted as an emergency measure rather than to cover up for perhaps an administrative or clerical error which resulted in the vote not happening on town meeting day. Uh, I went back and researched the whole subdivision subject in relation to the Planning Commission. They started working on it in 2016, worked on it in 2017, 2018, and finally in 2019 got to the point where it was ready for a vote. That did not happen on town meeting day for whatever reason. And then it was requested that these bylaws be enacted by interim bylaws. But the way I read the bylaw statute, it seems to suggest that you, you enact interim bylaws because there's an emergency that, that needs to be addressed. My point there being that in 2016, there were seven subdivision applications. In 2017, there were three. In 2018, there were three. So we're getting either progressively less or the same number of subdivisions every year. It would not seem to constitute an emergency at this point to have interim bylaws put in place. I would further suggest that we just uh, table the idea until next year and vote on it like we were supposed to on town meeting day. That's kind of the gist of my, uh, my statement. And I'm not sure if you have a quorum anyway tonight. Can we even vote on anything tonight? You don't have a quorum? A quorum. Okay. What was the say the BSA again? What was the next number? 2024 BSA? Uh, 4415. 4415 uh, interim bylaws. And 4444 public hearings. Did you notice that that chapter contains a definition of emergency in that chapter? I did not. But it specifically says uh, as an emergency measure. So I'm not sure that we have an emergency that needs to be addressed by subdivision laws at this time since it's been a four-year process that was supposed to be voted on. And if you were to read this year's uh, town report, the planning commission section states that uh, we spent a good deal of time reviewing and revising the proposal to add subdivision regulations to the Moore Town Zoning Bylaw. Both the Planning Commission and the Select Board held hearings on the draft regulations, and you will find a question on the town meeting ballot asking if the town will adopt them. And then if you look for the warning for the ballot, item number 13 says, shall the voters of the town of Moortown vote to adopt revisions to Moortown's only regulations as presented by the, to the Select Board by the Planning Commission. Blah, 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 subdivision regulations. According to the last during the ballot. 
So I guess I object to the the substance of the <laughs> of the zoning bylaws. Uh, I object to the execution of the of the vote. And I object to using interim bylaws as a way to thwart the vote that should have happened on town meeting. So it's um, so before that where it says emergency, it says the legislative body may adopt interim bylaws regulating land developments in all or part of the municipality in order to protect the public health, safety, and general welfare and provide for orderly physical and economical growth. So I would say if you if they feel one of those needs to happen, that deems an emergency. So those are your guidelines. Thank you. And that's in the yeah, the same one. Yeah, right. and the one he read is right up the top. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that you object to the contents of the revised bylaws. Now, yes. <clears throat> I had the mistaken impression that after all the revisions, you were okay with them. It's, it's far better than the 17 pages of the original was. But there's still some shells and there's many uh, open-ended requirements in there, such as landscaping requirements and such as shell provide appropriate landscaping relative to the neighboring properties. What does that mean? What, what authority decides what is appropriate landscaping? Is that the ERB? Is that you have to produce a professional plan from a landscape architect to say this is appropriate landscaping. Uh, I've, I've had someone prepare one of those before. It's not a cheap uh, endeavor to to produce a landscaping plan. So that's that's one specific uh, one I can think of. I'm sure there's others if you'd like other examples, but As far as letting people know, I mean, you guys know it's on front porch forum, it's in the paper, it's on our website, it's hung up. Yes, and no one has ever given any attention. No, so it's definitely advertised that these hearings happen. Well, yeah, I know, and it's been well advertised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, pretty much all of the meetings, it's, you're in. Yep. Do you know why the changes you recommended didn't make it through the Planning Commission's submitted version? Mm -hmm. 
Because and, and once they were told about something five times, usually the change of idea. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's weird than it was because originally it was it's not a facing zoning with our with mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. put in it. Mm -hmm. That's how it started out. Part. It's a little more specific than what we've said. I mean, it gives mm -hmm. what, you, what you should do and where it's. So there's the landscaping right. part, and it quotes where the standards should be found. So, the, the, what I understand is um, it's a what is triggering the same. According to who? Yeah. Well, as defined by the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. Mm -hmm. So it does say where that's, those are the standards. So uh, uh, I'm just, what is triggering the emergency situation, I believe, is the land, the large tracks that are for sale on mm -hmm. Moortown Mountain Road. I think that's, that's what's my understanding. That there was some concern that somebody was going to try those and start a major development, which would have to go through Act 250 anyways, I think. Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. yeah. Accepting this stuff and then working on amending the things that are too specific or or insufficiently specific. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. I just uh, I, it's like let's see how badly we can do it, and if we can't get it done that way, we'll just stick it in the back door, basically. And that's the that's the. The fact, it should have been voted on on town meeting day. It was not, and now all of a sudden it, we need it regardless. And I don't understand the rush to uh, put it in now as an interim zoning. There is no emergency with subdivisions. The, the number of subdivisions has been going down and or flatlining, let's say. So it's not like we're overwhelmed with subdivisions. I can't say there's any public safety issue that I can see with a couple of subdivisions happening in town. I think we need more subdivisions in town, to be quite honest with you. We need to spread the tax burden around. I'm kind of wondering why all those houses of Gallagher Acres have not increased the grand list in, in a way that reduced everybody's tax, everybody else's taxes. Probably 20 new homes over there in the last three years, and yet I don't think we've seen a, a drop in our taxes related to that. But the grand list is grand up. Is up. Is up. Right. Well, then, then shouldn't the tax burden be spread further to further people, thus reducing the taxes? That would be I think how, how I would think it would work. There should be more people paying into the, the, in the pot, right? I think it's because prior expensive has gone up faster than our grand list. That's why the tax rate goes up. And so and it's not just the towns. Right. I understand most of education. We can't have a discussion about that. <clears throat> well, we we don't have to adopt this tonight. So I mean, we've had over here. I can adopt it next week if you want. Mm -hmm. I've also had our members of the planning here to support this document. I I 
Don't know what to say about that. It's so icy. What's that? I said so icy. <laughs> to problems? Yeah, I just not this time. Yeah. I just think maybe the reversion process do it right with the little this morning. So one 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 person, one vote preference. Well, I think it's a big enough issue that we need the whole mm -hmm. select board here to I, I agree. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if a member of the planning commission were here, you know, it might be a different story. Mm -hmm. But nobody's here to defend no. this. Well, they saw this as more of a formality because you already agreed to put it on the ballot. If you already said yes to them. So this was just kind of a formality right. so they wouldn't have to prove their case again. There, there is a difference between opening it up to a vote and deciding on it. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Yeah, correct. So I, I mean, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess we're in agreement, but we're not going to adopt yeah. it tonight. So. I'd like to hear a new Zoom in the next year. That would be good time. <clears throat> Could we can we get a, a legal opinion on the emergency reading of that, or like from a lawyer? What lines? Or has he already I, I don't I don't know, but I mean I you know how thorough Cheryl was and so I, I would imagine all that was was discussed. Well Katrina pulled up the language, it sounded she pulled up the language. It sounded open enough that we could do it. The question was yeah. should we? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So I think, okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean that's Okay. That's pretty typical for the statutes. <laughs> Do you want it on the next agenda? Yes, please. With the uh, zoning administrator here and anybody else? Yeah, I would. I would like. Yes, I. I would like the zoning administrator here. Somebody from the planning commission. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll be here, of course. <laughs> I mean, once, once again, I, mean, I will point out like, the landscape and everything, as we all know, Carl has done a tremendous job. And, and, I mean, if everybody followed the way you did it, there wouldn't be any issues. I mean, Carl's done everything right. But it's it's not you, it's somebody who doesn't do anything. I don't want to pay for somebody else's sin. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. What else do you think? I think that was the last thing. Not much else. Not much else. Katie, Katie's leaving, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no good news, anyway. Yeah, that was all the news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Doug. All right, thanks for having Thank you. And speaking about holding things for a full board, yes, I thought some pretty important stuff was done at the last meeting that I really wish I was here for. Okay. And I would prefer, because I didn't see the emergency pushing those things for Mine, yeah. I would have preferred that it would be that. Um, well, sorry. Um, yeah. To, just you, didn't you, know. let, you didn't even let us know you weren't coming. No, I was too sick. So I didn't even know what happened. Not getting. Yeah. Yeah.
So let's uh, take a look, uh, continue with reports and communication. And the only one I have here is that uh, we've already discussed uh, regarding um, Brownsville Road. Mm -hmm. So, Ray, do you have anything? So it's number three, the personnel, <laughs> or, okay. for reason number three. All right, so I'll second that. It should be pretty quick. Okay. Mike. 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 Mike.